So Fox buys are known for not having very good brakes. So I came across this kit that was $500. Uh, a lot of people are spending $1,500, $2,000. Yeah, they're probably better brakes, but I just wanted to go to a disc brake system in the back instead of these drum brakes. So I got this from foxbodybrakes.com. Uh, it's $500 for the kit, uh, another $100 for the, uh, the brake cables. Uh, everything's brand new. It's not remanufactured. It's brand new. Um, it's got a nice bracket and nice drilled slotted rotors. So uh, let's get started putting it in. But before we get started, I always read my disclaimer below in the description because I'm not liable for anything you guys do. Uh, I'm just showing you how I do, how I'm doing my brakes. Well, first thing to do, of course, take the tires up, jack up the car, take the tires off, and take all the bolts out of the differential and just leave the top bolt in and loosen a little bit. And then we'll uh, go ahead and drain this differential here. Kind of crack it open, let, let it all drain out. Make sure you chalk the wheels on the front for your car and then uh, take it out of gear, put it in neutral so you can spin this. But um, go ahead and take the cross pin bolt out. And then the pin. So after you get the cross pin out, set it to the side, we can uh, spin it around a little bit and push this, uh, push the pin out. Yeah, it fell right out. What you need to do at this point is push the axle in just enough so it goes in, you can pull this clip out right in between the spring there. You could have pulled the drums off before, I just chose to do it now. You pull the drums off now, and then uh, carefully pull the shaft out and try not to damage the seal. There we go. Hey, go ahead and inspect your shaft. This, these are new shafts, these aren't that old. Make sure there's no pits in them. I prefer to use this type of line wrench on the brake lines. Don't use a regular wrench if you don't have to. And loosen the brake line. So this is what I did here to release the uh, emergency brake cable. I put a screwdriver right here and pried this out. And then under here, you get underneath the, the brake cable and just um, pry it out of the uh, slot. Once you get it out of the slot, you can remove it like that. That'll save you from taking everything apart. You can just un unlatch that. So pushing the two tabs on top worked when I angled this up and using the screwdriver on the bottom and then just wiggled it and it came out. So it comes out pretty easy that way. You don't have to take everything apart in the drum. Now we can go and uh, remove these four bolts and take the whole drum assembly off. So I'll show you the last bolt. Uh, make sure you wear a mask because the brake dust is not good for you. Or a Rona mask, I don't know. And it all comes off. All right, the next step I'm doing is uh, just take a file real quick around this. Make sure it gets all the, uh, any kind of rust off. So make sure you hold it flat and you go all the way around and then um, I got them labeled for driver side and passenger side so this one will go right here and you'll use your factory bolts if you want to I'm going to and I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, some 242 Loctite on there to hold it in place so I'll do that next All right, the uh, axle is ready to go back in for a test fit. Just be careful not to mess up the seal. All right, pull it back a little bit. 
All right, so now we're at the point I put the shaft back in, and now I'm going to put the C clip retainer back in. Turn that around some. And then push it in a little bit further. Get in there. Okay. Let me use the screwdriver. Go in. All right, now I'll pull the shaft back out. Hard to see. All right, now, now I can put the uh, the pin back in. All right, so I'm gonna temporarily put this pin back in and just set it in place for right now. Another thing is, while you're in the differential, you might as well buy a uh, new clutch pack for your limited slip and put those in while you're in there. I think I'll do that. Um, since I have it on hand and then it comes with a friction modifier and it comes with a, a new bolt So I'll probably put that in but for now I'm just gonna put the pin in and go ahead and set up the brake system So the brake kit comes with a, uh, a bracket to hold the brake line So this goes around your axle Like this and you'll have to bend the bend this brake line right into this fitting here it's gonna go right here so you have to bend the brake line carefully and make it go into that and strap that down I'm gonna do that now so I went ahead and put the hose clamp on with the bracket I went ahead and screwed in the uh, can you see that in there yeah I guess so the brake fitting with the flexible hose so I wouldn't damage it I have this bending tool it's okay I'm just gonna start it with it to get it to bend as far as I need to and then I'm gonna bend the rest by hand I just didn't want to kink the hose so I'm gonna get it into place a little bit better just by bending it by hand and being careful let's get it close enough where it'll be near that bracket and then stretch it a little bit my hose is leaking everywhere here so all right now I'm gonna take it back apart and put it in the uh, clamp All right, so now I can take the hose fitting and put it in there and put this uh, clamp in to hold it. I can hit that down some. There we go. There we go. Get that out of the way enough to. Okay. And now I can reconnect this. So I'm ready to dry fit everything. I found these in the package, but I didn't see anything in the instruction on them. So I'm assuming it's for lining up the uh, the rotor so it's lined up on there. So I'm going to put that on here first. Put this on. Yep. That'll keep it centered so it won't wobble around. Alright, and then I'll uh, put on a couple nuts. And test the caliper, see where it lines up at. Alright, so I got the caliper mounted. What I had to do to get an even spacing here, I got, oh, right here. I got three millimeter gap here and a three millimeter gap here now. And what I had to do to do that was add a one millimeter washer right here as a spacer. And then on the bolts, I added two washers to keep the bolts from hitting the rotor. So that's what I had to do. All right, so now it's time to load up the springs in the caliper. The spring goes in here, just put it up under there and clip it in. And I've got one of these in right now. Now what I had to do with this was uh, bend this tab so I could push it on to the brake pad. So that one's loaded. So now I'll do the other one. 
Well, I almost forgot to spray down the rotors before I put them on. But I'll do that now. I right, got the caliper bracket mounted with the washers back there. I loctited the bolts. Got one pad in. I greased up these pads right here. I don't. I usually don't put it all over the pads. I just put it where I, it rubs on the metal. And uh, put those in like that. And on the caliper, I just put some grease on the on this piston, and then somewhere to where it rides. And then I'll put this on. I got the bottom bolt in and got the springs lined up inside there right and now I'll put the top bolt in tighten them down all right now I'm ready to put the brake line on I got the bolt with the crush washer on that side and another crush washer here and bolt it right in here it's leaking all over the place So after trial and error, I ran the brake hose like this right here, and then I bent it, I had it come down, let's see, let's get a good angle here, like that, and it goes up under and it doesn't interfere with anything. All right, next thing to do is to remove the parking brake cable. We'll have to uh, remove this screw and bracket here comes back up this way I can slide a socket over it I gotta figure out what size socket it takes but slide a socket over that and that'll pop out and then I'll have to take the ball out of the, the connector up there I don't know if I can see it on this let's see so what I found is using a half inch socket with the, the uh, half inch drive will fit over that and it pops right out. Look at that. Next I have to fish the cable up through here. We'll push this cable back in all the way. Hopefully you can see that. Pull it back out. Fish it through that thing. It has a uh, an e-clip clip right here and reconnected the, the ball at the other end there well everything was going good until I got down to putting the parking brake cable into the caliper and it just won't go so I measured in millimeters this is a 12 and a half millimeter hole and this is a 13 and a half millimeter cable so uh, that comes out to a 17 30 seconds bit drill bit so I'm either gonna have to try to locate one of those uh, which I doubt I can locally but or I was thinking of uh, I wrapped a piece of sandpaper around a, a, uh, a dry pin and maybe I can just use sandpaper I'll give it a try and let you know So I ended up using the 80 grit paper. You can use a drill bit. I used a drive punch, a little bit smaller than the hole. And now the uh, cable will fit in there fine. So it took me a while to do it. I almost wore out a battery on that one drill on this one caliper. So I got to do it to the other caliper. All right, so now I can uh, take the parking brake cable and fit it through the hole. Take this E-clip. Now I can put the E-clip on. There you go. And now put your bracket back on the, this cable and mount it back up into here. We'll have to play around with the cable to get it to uh, fit fit right in this area. But. And then connect the, uh, the other end of the parking brake cable here. So 
So now that we got all the hardware on, uh, it's time to bleed the brakes. Get a partner out here to help you do that. I'm not going to show you guys how to do the bleed the brakes. I'm, you guys know how to do that. We we'll always start in the rear passenger side, then move to the rear driver side, then the front passenger side, and then the front driver side. So now it's time to put the pin bolt back in. So I'll tighten that up. And um, if you don't have one of these, I'd get a lube blocker from LMR. They're pretty good reusable gasket for the cover. So I'll put the bolt back on, put the cover back on, fill it back up with oil, and test drive it. Uh, the cover's back on now. Let's fill it up. And now it's time to fill it back up. Make sure you add the uh, friction modifier. Yeah, so the brakes turned out pretty good. Uh, it wasn't a bad project, it just took a little while. They look pretty good right there. So let's get this thing lowered and uh, give it a test drive. Glad I finally upgraded these brakes from drums to disc. I wish I could have done that 30 years ago. Uh, I've got 323,000 miles on this vehicle, and the uh, braking power is is great now. It's not like it used to be. I don't hear all the chatter of the drum and all that. And uh, but if you really slam on the brakes, I do get a right wheel lockup, so I'll have to look into that and see what I can do to fix that. But I'm pretty happy with it.